Let's go. We did it again. Oh, 330 gold. Dude. All right, I'm going to settle here on this flat tile. Wait. Three cities by turn 23? Wait, young Lei, I had three cities by turn 25 and I thought that was good. Dude. <laughs> Dude. Uh, hello? This just in. Caesar's good? Hello, nerds, and welcome to the brand new and improved Caesar. <laughs> So this was a complete surprise to us, but Fraxis decided to buff a lot of the weaker sieves from the leader pass. Julius Caesar was definitely one of those sieves that was a little bit underwhelming. And I do got to say, I love these changes. I want to see exactly how this goes. We see, you can see we rolled a pretty basic spawn here. Pretty normal, nothing too special. Uh, we have some plains, we have some grassland, we have a couple of luxuries nearby. So if you stick around, you should be able to replicate everything we do today. You can see the update here is Vede Vidi Vici has been buffed. Before, it was only 200 gold when you conquer a city and 100 gold when you clear a barbarian outpost. They simplified it, made, made the numbers the same and better. <laughs> it's now 300 gold whenever you conquer a city for the first time or when you earn gold from a barbarian outpost. We are playing without any game mode today, so no barbarian clans. This is just straight normal barbarians. So we're not gonna be able to do the forever farming of barb clans, but trust me, this is strong enough. Uh, they also made it so it scales throughout the game better. Before they had it so that it was 200 gold for whenever you conquer a city, but when you get all the way up to steel in the modern era, you got 500. That's pretty late. And they only scaled the city gold, not the barbarian gold. Now it's 300 gold when you clear a burning camp or a conquer a city, and it's 500 gold when you get metal casting, which is in the Renaissance era. You notice that's two eras before modern era, and then it's also two eras after the classical era, which is when the legions and Caesar really comes online. So it's a really good halfway point, in my opinion. Uh, so it's 500 gold when you get to metal casting and 700 gold when you get to steel. So scales very, very well. Now, here's actually the best part. When targeting barbarians, we save a plus five combat strength and always earn normal XP. That basically means we are always running the discipline card before we even have policy cards. But this also stacks on top of discipline. So you get plus 10 combat strength against barbarians. Meaning if you're a new player and you hate barbarians, Caesar might actually be, <laughs> might actually be a good play for you. Not only that, you can get multiple promotions. Normally, when you get to level one, you stop getting experience or one experience per combat from barbarians, meaning it's really hard. You can't really get to level two or three by fighting barbarians. Caesar, though, can, meaning our warriors, if we run them out here, they will be able to go ahead and clear out a bunch of barbarian camps, get to level one, level two, and then upgrade into legions. And then we'll have level two and three legions before we even start attacking another civ. It's going to be great. That's enough about that, but I'm going to go ahead and just start here. So I'm going to start by moving my... Ooh, all right. We already have a good hit nearby. I will settle my capital here of Rome. And there's no need to change the name, right? Rome is too iconic to change the name. <laughs> so normally I build scouts, but with Caesar here, I'm going to skip scouts and go straight for warriors. Double warrior opening. There's no reason for us to spend time on scouts when our warriors can help us clear barbarian camps, get a bunch of gold, and then be upgraded to legions later. That's just such a good opening. We're also going to go straight for legions. <laughs> the, uh, normally I, I play around a little bit differently, but we're going to go mining into bronze working pretty much ASAP. I want to be able to kill three barbarians, which is exactly what we're trying to do. Meaning, we can kill barbarians, boost bronze working, put down encampments, get general points, immediately upgrade our warriors that are already upgraded into legions and then attack someone incredibly early. Usually the problem with going with swordsman rushes is that you don't have the gold to back up an army because you don't have commercial hubs or harbors yet. However, Caesar fixes that. Because we do get gold by conquering barbarians. Also, if we have some gold resources like gypsum, maize, um, even diamonds especially, this is really good. We can have gold on some of these tiles, which will help us have enough gold to maintain a few legions before we even get to commercial hubs. We will want to build these later, but we don't need to focus on them immediately. We can go for the military push first. All right, there we are. So we're going to go grab this goodie hut. Boom. <laughs> more gold let's go okay okay good start good start we also have a reef down here 
And there's our first barbarian clan. This is who we want to go after. Now you'll see, uh, I'm going to actually send my warriors out in multiple directions to see if we can clear as many camps as possible. Now you can see here, we have a plus five combat strength versus barbarians. Uh, we have additional plus five versus anti-cav, which meaning this unit actually has 30 combat strength without discipline. And this isn't really the best example. You can see this is the hardest barbarian camp to clear. It is a double fortified spearmen on a hill's rainforest tile, meaning they have so much combat strength. But with Caesar, we will be able to slowly wind them down like we do with every camp, but a little bit more effectively than a normal Civ would. So I'm going to sit here and actually just heal for a little while while I get my other warrior to go. He's going to go out to the east, I think, to look for more barbarians. And then my last warrior will go up to the north Northeast. Sorry. This warrior will go to out to the west. <laughs> I know directions. The west. Uh, my last warrior will go up this way. Uh, explore the rivers. See where we could maybe settle more cities. And keep on slowly winding down. You can see this or this unit's already at half health, which is fantastic for us. Uh, there's also dice down here. There's a massive flood. Five tiles gain fertility. Dude, look at that wheat. Dude. Holy cow. Okay, I want to get up there, dude. And another good hit. It's fantastic. Um, you can see I'll actually get a promotion if I attack. I'm going to heal one more turn and then I'll do that. So you get five experience every time you attack a barbarian. So you can see third attack promotion. Uh, military tradition boost. That's actually really annoying. That's the one thing I plan to do today. <laughs> but you can see we actually have a good amount of gold already. I might save this gold for an early builder because I would like to get the craftsman boost. But let's go into Fortify, and also, we can still promote back to almost full health, and now we have Battle Cry as well. We're going to keep exploring. There's a nice river up this way to settle. Lots of woods, lots of chops, maybe? All right, this warrior's going to go out this way, looking for a place for us to settle, because right now, it's time for us to settle. And I'm going to be looking for good resources to work, as well as uh, maybe Plains Hills to settle on. So this is actually a good tile here. And you can see here, so now our warrior has an additional plus seven combat strength from the battle cry promotion, meaning we have 35 combat strength. We are now finally clearing this camp and look at our gold. Look at our gold. Oh, wait. Oh, hi, Tamar. Hang on. Get out of the way. 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 Ah, oh, 450 gold <laughs> with just our starting warrior. Dude, you know what that means? I can just gold buy a settler right now. This is where Caesar shines. Before, you would only get 100 gold from clearing this barb camp, which, as you'll know, a monument is 240, which was like, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Um, so compared to Trajan, who gets the free monument, um, gold is more flexible, but you also need to have more gold to make this actually viable. Um, that means we can get a turn 14 second settle. That's fantastic. Uh, and then because I'm at one population, I'm going to wait a little bit to grow. But we will build this builder until we can get our uh, second seller out. Um, Tamar's here with... I don't... Mm -hmm. I know there's a builder there. I don't want to... I don't want to start anything yet. I don't want to start anything yet. Oh, hi. Free barbarian kill. Nice. More goodie huts? Ooh, okay. Okay, this settler, um, because this is what I have explored, I'm gonna go up this way, see where we can go. Speaking of diamonds, that's fantastic, dude. That's really good. That's really good. Now, it is 75 gold to buy this tile. It might be worth it to keep our city growing nice and fast, or I could save the gold for a builder. Um, I could either settle here, or I could settle on the diamonds. If you settle on the resource, you do actually keep the luxury. That is best. But here we are. It's now time for Discipline giving us another 5 combat strength. And I will run God King for a little bit. I guess a little bit of extra faith. Actually, hang on. We do have faith resources nearby. So I wonder... We can skip it. Hang on. I'll, let me think about that. Oh, a free builder. Holy crap, dude. That's phenomenal. Yeah, let's do it. Let's just run God King. We have one city and run Discipline. No need to run the Scout card. I want to settle over here by these diamonds. 
Hopefully there's another really good tile to work, like this two food, two production tile, and there's candy. First meet on candy. Candy? Please. Candy will give us a relic if we find natural wonders. Oh, I want to get Susan of them ASAP. And I'm going to go straight for Craftsman. We have builders. We can boost this very easily. And there's barbarians up here. All right, I'm running. I'm running up here. I'm going to go ahead and settle on the diamond tile. <laughs> this is a goodie hut. <laughs> That's fantastic. Irrigation boost, era score as well. And I'm going to step over this hill so I can see what's going on here. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, I can't get there. Oh, oh man, please. Oh, candy. I don't think they'll be able to kill that. I'm going to settle right here. We settle on the diamond resource. We actually keep food and production. The two food, two production base, as well as the three gold per turn. We get a goodie hut. Uh, I didn't see what that was. There's another flood over here. I did not see what I got from that. <laughs> I will see in the edit what the hell that meant. <laughs> Um, and because we have this good tile, I'm actually going to go ahead and buy this two food, two production tile to work and make sure that we work it. Focusing food and production on our cities. And we still have 100 gold. Uh, you can see we immediately got a road to our second city. That's just because of how all roads lead to roam mobility. All cities founded or conquered to start with a trading post. And if within trade route range to the capital, they also start with a road to it. You get plus one gold for every time you have a trading post go through the city. But what this means is that we get free roads, we get free infrastructure, we get free like extra movement, which is phenomenal for us. Because I don't actually need this builder yet, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to the settler to get that done as soon as possible. And my warrior will keep exploring. Yes, I can settle over here again. So I can settle right here. There's a two food, two production tile to work. And then we can actually district between all the three of these cities. Or I could set all the cattle here. Actually, I kind of like maybe doing a four city opener in this game. That has, a, that has a lot of appeal to me today. I like opening with builders instead of monuments. We can delay the culture for a little bit. That's just fine. And uh, we'll have more builders for more. I like focusing on food and production in the early game. Oh, let's go. We did it again. Oh, 330 gold! Dude! Does that mean I can just buy the settler now? Oh my goodness, I can just buy the settler right now. Dude. <laughs> Let's go and finish the builder! Dude! Holy cow, let's go! That's so good! And... <laughs> Oh, that was so strong. Holy, that slinger had no chance. No chance. Especially because we're going uh, on the top part of the culture tree. It is really nice to be able to buy settlers because I'm not going to be able to use the colonization card for a little while because I'm prioritizing uh, other, th other things. There's another barbarian. Oh, bro, it's time. It's time, dude. Let's, oh, there's another one. Oh, okay. He's not there. Anyways, I'm going to buy... Uh, I'll have enough gold to buy that tile in three turns. It'll be fine. Step here. Builder can wait. Goody hat's there. And I want to get Susan or Candy. They want us to train a Spearman. We could actually do that. Another Goody hut. Nice. So I'm going to step here to grab this Goody hut before someone else takes it. Archery boost is phenomenal. Now I don't have to train any Slingers to get this Archery boost. Yeah, that's why I grabbed this now, because I knew Georgia might be coming to grab that goodie hut. All right, I'm going to settle here on this flat tile, which means I can now go ahead and buy another luxury. Get a core improve and boost craftsman as well as masonry, which will be important for us because we're going to need battling rams, given that Georgia is our neighbor and she loves building walls more than anyone else in the game. <laughs> So again, opening up builders. Mm. No, actually, our third city can open a monument. I do need a little bit of culture. Now look up into the tundra for more barbarians. Here's a builder done. And I, now we're at two pop. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> another, another, another one. <laughs> another one. Ho hello? Oh, look, I got a follower on Twitch. Hey, that should be a reminder to everyone. If you like Civ 6 content, but you want to see it live, come by Twitch. Thank you. Dude. All right, our settlers are getting expensive, but this is fine. I'll have a four city opener here, which is phenomenal because look at what we can do. Um, because we're going bronze working first, I will be able to place some early encampments 
and in the direction of Georgia, meaning our units will spawn this direction and be able to attack her very easily. After encampments and legions, we are coming back for horseback riding into riding. Uh, we will be placing a government plaza early, so that's probably going to go right here in the center. I think it's a good spot for us because a lot of I'll have three, four cities being able to benefit from the adjacency with the government plaza. I will be unlocking campuses, so I'd like to place a campus probably just right here. Plus one, plus two, that's plenty enough to be beneficial. Ooh, it's a forest fire. But our main priority will be commercial hubs because we need the gold to be able to fund the military more so than just relying on the random running into barbarians. So we can put commercial hubs here because they're on a river, they get plus two because they're adjacent to the government plaza, they get plus one. And if they're between two different districts, they get additional plus one. So this commercial hub will probably go here. Um, I might actually move this city in because we could actually do a pretty nice industrial zone here that's going to be boosted by our baths. Remember, we have a unique aqueduct right here, the bath, which gives us extra amenities. And because we have quarries online, we should be able to have some really good industrial zones right between these cities being boosted by our bath tiles, which also will boost the adjacency to this commercial hub. And then we are playing as Rome, right? So we have we have to build the Colosseum in Rome, right? So if we put that right here, Colosseum, we put an entertainment complex, we can put a theater square next to both the entertainment complex, the Wonder, and Government Plaza with more districts, you have a plus seven theater square, as well as another theater square that fits right here really well. That's phenomenal. Then we can put two more districts over here. Um, either I put the commercial hub here for a plus five, and uh, yeah, then I can put another campus there. <laughs> That is a fantastic example of how you can utilize settling your cities really close to each other so that they can all district together to get the best of the adjacencies of all of your districts. And on the other side, we can settle five or six tiles away to make sure that Rome has all of these workable tiles. It's a... Uh, it's uh this is this is how i like to play and if you settle minimum distance that means there's less turns moving your settlers which means these cities get online faster and you just have more momentum it's turn 24. wait wait i beat my record wait young lay i had three cities by turn 25 and i thought that was good dude <laughs> dude <laughs> This game is going so well. Holy cow, dude. And we're about to get our bronze working too, which means we're about to get our encampments down. And we have three cities. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. All right, this guy actually needs to heal. But you can see he's actually gaining experience to level two, meaning that we can get commando on our warriors. It's phenomenal. <laughs> That's phenomenal. All right, this builder has three charges, so I might as well use it uh, for maybe chopping out this settler to get it done. Uh, I would rather save my chops until I have things that will benefit it, like Magnus. So I'm just gonna use this builder to improve tiles, meaning I'm gonna go up here and just make mines. All right, here's a barbarian clan spawned right there. That's fantastic. A foreign trade boost is actually kind of nice because we are playing Pangea. I mean, it's kind of hard to find other continents, but this warrior is going to come back here. Um, if I do get enough gold for another warrior, that might be worth it. Bronze. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get a nice attack here. <laughs> Look, my warrior, again, this is the bad example. Double fortified rainforest hills tile, but my warrior is still stronger with all of these combat bonuses. Fantastic. And he's even weak, too. So we got uh, bronze working. That means we unlocked iron. Um, looks like our iron is actually way down here. Meaning I might actually want to settle down here to get this iron online instead of settling up here. But regardless, we need to get iron online. So I, I could buy down to here, but I also want to scout what's down here first. Let's get that warrior back. And I'm going to start working on iron working. Oh, there's a wonder. Wait, wait, candy, wonder. I don't want to discover this wonder yet. I want to wait till we're a no candy, meaning I need to get a governor title, which means I need more culture. Just heal for a turn. Please don't scout my way. Oh, there's that rainforest fire. Now it is quite a bit of experience we need to get to actually be able to clear that. We'll heal for a turn. 
We're just slowly grinding down the camps. You, there's no rush. Ooh. Oh. Oh, those are good tiles, dude. There's no rush to clearing these camps. Uh, and if your warrior gets too low in health, the spearman might come out and attack. So you don't want to overdo it. Now, we do have our encampments unlocked, so I do want to try to buy these tiles out and get them placed as soon as possible. You'll see the cost of your districts will go up with time based on how many techs or civics you unlo have unlocked, whichever is greater. So you'll want to try to get these down as soon as possible, meaning I'm actually going to go ahead and do a thing. I do have plus one amenity, meaning I can actually sell one of these to Tamar to get some instant gold right now so that I can place down some encampments. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a triple encampment opener. This might seem a little bit weird to if you're not familiar, but uh, trust me, <laughs> you'll want to stick around. I'll explain exactly what I'm doing and why this is so important in a little bit. All right, we got craftsman, meaning I can plug in urban planning now. I will keep in discipline. I do have the go gay card for when we want to spam warriors later. But right now we're working on our encampments, trying to work down these barbarians. We might actually get raided too, which is kind of a problem. So I need to send this warrior back home. I'd also like to try to get a golden age if we can. And I'm going to go straight for state workforce. I need this governor title here. And we're about to finish a encampment, meaning we should be able to boost this. Uh, we lost our farm on this tile. That's actually error score to improve it again. So we're going to go for it. We have another builder. This city will grow. And we can actually clear this camp right now. Oh, no. <laughs> it was so close. So close. No, I'm going to use this chop here to finish this encampment nice and quickly. Uh, the great bath was built. That's fine. Dude, the floods. What is going on? The tiles, bro. The tiles. All right, we're stepping up here. I do. I need to heal a turn here. Let's choose a pantheon. This is actually, hang on. This is one of the few situations where you could go for... Faith and healing for clearing barb camps. I think someone took that. That's crazy. And I'm not going for holy sites. So the adjacency to holy sites is not really applicable here. We don't have enough marsh for Lady of the Reeds and Marshes. And God of the Sea is not really our, our jam. Uh, God of Craftsman would be really good if iron and horses were actually like in our capital. I don't know where horses are, but the iron's too far away to really make the most of this. So it's probably a good choice. I think what we want to do though... Oh, it's, uh, it's gone. God of the Forge, which gives you production towards ancient and classical era melee units, is gone. That's a bummer. But the, I wanted to use that to do a really, really, really fast legion push, but I think we'll go for a Pantheon. That's just going to help us well throughout the whole game. You know what I'm going to do? Because God of Craftsman is not that good right now, and the production towards military units is not here either. I'm going to do something different and do City Patron Goddess. This is 25% production towards districts and cities without a specialty district. There's a lot of different ways you can use this, um, but we're going to use it to finish these encampments really, really quickly, as well as a try to do a district discount or chop here. We're going to focus food here. I need to make sure that these cities are growing nice and tall so I can get to my second district. The second district is incredibly important. Uh, let's get another farm here. And I need the error score from Candy. Anyways, these encampments will be done nice and fast. There's that barb camp. You're standing on top of my encampment. That's really annoying. Oh, there's another goody hut, dude. Sweet. Oh, I will get a mine here to replace that woods tile. And I'm actually going to save these builders to improve the iron down here. I think that'd be a good move for us. There's another flood. Dude, <laughs> stop breaking my things. All right, here we are. This is a much better example. You can see here he has ideal terrain of only plus three, not plus six. This is a woods tile. He still has plus six, and this guy doesn't even have battle cry yet. So let's go ahead and start grinding him down as well as finally clearing this camp. Boom, 330 gold. <laughs> Man, uh, we could also buy a spearman giving us an envoy with uh, candy here. Oh, well, that's fantastic. I'll buy the Spearman. One more melee unit, and that's going to help us actually get the military tactics boost by killing this scout. 
Also, it's gonna just help us deal with this barbarian raid that's about to happen, and I'm not looking forward to. Let's fix that farm. And yeah, we got good tiles here in the capital, which means I'm gonna actually buy this tile too. That Ford Food three, 2 production tile is phenomenal. I need that tile. Uh, this scout is gonna attack us. This Because his camp is gone, he's gonna be enraged. I need to fortify. That way the scout's going to fight us. <laughs> But we'll have a fortification and also a hill jungle tile. We should be fine here. Coupe! Dude, hi! Oh, Coupe's over here? And Oh, he's going to end up settling on this. Yeah, he's going to come settling here. Um, I'm going to clear this camp before the raid starts. We get another 300. No! 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 <laughs> Oh, man. Hang on. Hang on, dude. All right. So we have our first encampment done. That boosts state workforce. We can actually build the barracks, which means we'll get a really good value out of uh, training units from this city. We'll also get Commando. Level 2 Warrior. He has three movement now. All right. Here we are. Um, I actually need to fortify. I need to get a battle. I need to get the promotion instead of attacking here. And that's kind of probably going to spawn another unit. But we're just going to have to deal with that. Uh, Rome is growing super fast. I actually want to chop this maze. Even though it's a good tile, I want to get my government plaza down ASAP. And also, I need to finish this encampment. Yeah, there's a warrior, but that's fine. 41 strength on this warrior now. Dude. Dude. 10 advantage against barbarians. 5 versus anti cav 7 from battle cry. 330 gold immediately. Attack the scout. That's phenomenal. Uh, I can't chop the wheat. Oh no, I need pottery. <laughs> I need pottery. Oh no. Okay. Anyways, so what's going to happen? We have 400 gold again, which means I can actually use my gold to buy a barracks, I think, will be the move here. So that I can get straight to plugging in a goge and working on my warriors. And now that I have three warriors and a spearman, oh, nice boost to military tactics. How often does that happen in your games? Not often for me. Attack and attack. Still. Oh, there's a goodie cut there. We got an envoy. And we get Susan a candy. Did we find this? We found the wonder. Oh, no. We didn't get the relic because can... So how that works is that you become Susan a candy, you get Candy's vision, and then you get Candy's Susan bonus. Meaning we found this wonder, but we didn't find a relic. Um, dang. We do, however, have a golden age, and I'll have a governor title, meaning I can get Magnus ready for chopping here in my city. Uh, there's another barbarian camp here we can go after. So let's send both my warriors up that way. I want to clear that immediately. I'm gonna buy a barracks in this city. We're going all in on the great general points. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, your people are too trusting. They'll let into anyone in their cities, even barbarians. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? I don't think that's what's happening here. But all right, we're going to finish this monument. I do need to start working on my culture soon. We have four population in a row, meaning we can get our second district down. As soon as we get pottery, so I can actually remove this maze. Uh, it's going to be really hard to actually get this camp because Candy has three warriors. But I'm going to send my units back here. Uh, the Spearman's actually going to come out this way to clear out some stuff this way. Fog bus for us. Yeah, they're going to get that camp cleared. Ancient Era is about to end. There's double iron here. I need to settle down here for the double iron. All right, there's pottery. Meaning I can now go back to iron working. I can chop this tile. All right, I'll keep these cards how they are. Government Plaza should be discounted. Yeah, uh, you'll notice this city, this district is only 29 production as a as a cheap district, but more on that later. And I will finish the settler first. Oh, there's a horseman. All right, uh, this is a spearman unit. I'm going to back up to the most fortified terrain, though, a wooded hills tile. So you should be able to fight that horse very easily. Uh, I can almost get there. Governor title, it's time for Magnus. He's going into Rome, and we're going to use that to Legion chop like crazy. I need I need the gold from one more camp to get all my Legions upgraded. And now we're going to go for foreign trade, and early empire is also boosted. This is phenomenal. 
Yeah, they cleared the camp. They only got 50 gold. Oh, hello. Oh, dude, where are all these horses coming from? Uh... <laughs> uh... Well, then. Uh, this horseman should have how much movement? Three movements, so he can only cross the river. I need to get over to this iron tile ASAP and send this warrior with me. Send this warrior back to clear out this barbarian. And I need to save my gold for my legions or a builder for down here. You're going to double fortify on this hill. You should be able to fight back those guys easily. We have a government plaza placed. There we go. All right, the capital here is looking really good, dude. <laughs> really, really good, dude. All right, um, so I'm going to switch off of ironworking because we're about to boost this. I'm going to go for animal husbandry. I would like to know where my horses are. And I do still need to get a barracks in the city before I chop out all my legions. I want the extra experience boost. But you can see here we have four general points per turn, meaning we're going to get the first great general. And after we get generals and legions, no one will be able to stop us. At this point, I think it's worth going for Pengala. And I'm going to put him in the second city to get us a little bit of extra science and culture to get us through. And I'm going to start working on builders in these cities as we get ready for our legion chops. Yeah, this spearman is really strong on this hill. Uh, we will settle here to get our iron online and focus on fortifying. And I actually do need to keep my amenities. Uh, we get a free road here, meaning I can actually step and hit this guy even though he's in the woods. And this city only has three housing. So I'm gonna work on the granary here. We're just gonna hard build a granary until I have a district unlocked that I wanna place. I want to step here just to trap this scout. Uh, she wants to give my open borders and... Oh, yeah, I'll sell my Diplo favor to you. I'll definitely do that. And he's being annoying. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take that guy out. I do want to buy a builder here. 245 gold is what we'll need. We'll kill this guy. Just whacking this guy, <laughs> the, the, the scouts to get experience is phenomenal. Uh, I definitely want to prioritize the promotions here. And now that I have the barracks is done... I need a trader. Go early empire. See, these horse won't attack me because this spearman is too strong. But you can see here, a 45 strength spearman because 10 advantage versus barbarian and 10 versus cavalry. Just whack, dead, promote. That's fantastic. Keep discipline in for a little bit longer. And we hit the classical age in a golden era. Let's there are no go. This is an incredibly strong start. Now, what we need here is a few things you could do here. Monumentality is good for builder movements as well as gold buying settlers and builders. But from now on, we're going to be taking cities more than we'll be doing our own settling. Free Inquiry gives you a science on your commercial hubs, but we don't have those built yet. What I want to do is do pen, brush, and voice. Um, getting a more culture will get us to political philosophy faster, which means that we'll get to oligarchy faster, which means we will get the extra combat strength, which is really important coming up. So a little bit of extra culture, one culture per district that we have built. So we get an extra four culture because we have one, two, three, four districts built. We go for writing as well, and we're gonna go up to currency. I do need a little bit of gold here. I should have went builder first in this city. But let's kill that horse. And we'll kill this scout as well. And I wonder if those horses are going to keep coming. There is a goody head over here. No, it's gone. Coupe must have got it somehow. So we're going to attack and attack. Gone. I'm going to step over here to see where those barbarians are at. I might want to save that promotion just for a second. And we have our campuses unlocked. Um, you'll see our campuses are only 10 per turns to produce and compared to 17. The, the encampment was 83 production and the campus is 49 production. How can that be? I, t I said earlier that districts will scale and cost depending on how many techs or civics you have. But we have more techs than we had earlier when we built this encampment. This encampment was 63 production. Then how is this campus 49 production? Well, utilizing what's called a district discount mechanic, which is a mechanic in the game that is used to encourage players to build districts that they have not built yet. How it works is that you have three variables. You have the number of districts you have completed in your empire. That is one, we have one, two, three, four districts completely built. 
So three encampments and one government plaza. And there's the amount of districts you have unlocked. You can see we have one, two, three districts unlocked. And the last variable is how many districts of the type that you're trying to discount. If you divide the number of districts you have completed, divided by the number of districts you have unlocked, if that number is greater than or equal to the number of districts of a new district type that you're trying, trying to discount, this district gets a 40% production discount. So in this scenario, we have four districts completed and we only have three unlocked. So four divided by three is 1.3. 1.3 is greater than zero campuses, which then means our campuses are discounted. Now, I know this is a really complicated mechanic, but sometimes just knowing that it exists is really all you need to know to make the most of it. So if you see some of your districts are cheaper than others, that means maybe you should build some of them. If you want to learn how to utilize this mechanic to its fullest, make a comment down below and I'll make a full tutorial but how to use the district discount mechanic. We have a reef campus. We have a mountain campus. Uh, this will actually keep its adjacency for longer. So uh, with regardless of whether I chop out these rainforests. So actually I do want to put that over here. Um, I do need a builder. I very much need a builder. So I'm going to sell my horseman to Coupe so I can buy this builder. I can prove this mine, chop that tile. All right, at this point in the game, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take Connoisseur and Pengala. The culture is going to be really important for us. That's going to be an extra four culture per turn so that we can get to political philosophy and oligarchy a little bit faster. Extra four culture, shaving that down three turns earlier. That's going to heal and, uh, Coupe? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm also going to step over here to see where those horses went. We're about to finish the barracks. So at this point, we're going to take out discipline and it's time to actually plug in a goge so that I can spam out more warriors in my cities. Legions actually cost half the amount of iron that normal swordsmen do, so you can get a lot of them really quickly. Uh, coupe? 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 Um, sir. 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 <laughs> That's what you get, Coupe! You were greedy! You were greedy! Oh, that's a fantastic. That means I can get this last settle up here. Um, or we can settle for more iron. And I don't see any extra iron, so I'm okay with that. I actually, I do want to come back for irrigation so I can get this luxury online, get some more gold. And now, I need to sell... I'm going to sell the Diplo Favor to Tamar just so I can buy that tile. I can't just yet. Uh, I do want to wait on getting this iron because that will boost through iron working and unlock my legions and i wanted to build my warriors first i also need to make sure i get the battering ram oh there's a bunch of things i need i won't have the goal to upgrade these warriors so it's fine i'll go and i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna improve this it will unlock our legions uh, but technically we're or a coupe <laughs> that's so funny yeah that has ticked over to now legions uh, only one of them one i don't have enough iron so one of these is staying as a warrior I will send this trade route to, I want to send this to Candy, but with Rome's, all roads lead to Rome ability. Um, if you trade through your own cities, you get additional gold. So I'm going to send this to Rome and trade through Anthium to Candy. Uh, we do have a Barbarian here. Dude! Eight combat strength versus 39. Instant kill, builder. Nice. Dude, that Spearman was so worth it. So worth it. Um, I'm sending this Settler up this way. And I don't think we really need to worry about Coupe, to be honest. <laughs> That's so funny, dude. Oh, Coupe's here attacking the Barbarians. That's so funny. Thousands have, Thousands have lived. Uh, the Barbarian clan must be up this way. Uh, oh, oh, that's bad. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. So a little bit of gold here so I can chop this tile. I'm gonna chop through the granary here to just to finish it and get that plus two campus down. It is only 57 production, which is phenomenal. And we can trade with candy. Oh, that doesn't go through my city? Oh, it's so rude. Cause it's gonna go through the roads that already exist. Fine. We'll trade with candy here. And it's time to go up to currency. And now I have another luxury. I would also like to sell that to Tamar for instant gold. 
That's so good. As soon as I get iron online, I'll be able to upgrade these legions then. So let me send my warriors this way. And if I can get three legions it's and a battering ram, we'll be ready to push. So hang on, let me get the masonry quick. No, currency. I still need currency. There's a barb clan here. What? That spawn this turn? Oh, no. All right. Well, I'll send a legion up there. Actually, wait. That's fantastic. Tomorrow you can wait. I have other problems to deal with. There's a camp too? Yo. That's a melee unit. I'm going to go ahead and put thrust on this guy because I'm. that's my priority is to clear that. And there's a horse style here I'd like to improve. We can also chopper legions? No. I need to use my gold on legion upgrades. I need iron. Tamar, do you have iron? You do. You won't trade it. Her cities are not very strong right now. Send this builder to chop out these legions, I think. This is getting a little tricky because I'm trying to, to balance a bunch of different things right now, but we do just need to attack. We do just need to attack. That's gonna grow next turn, so I won't worry about chopping it. And there's our first legion. So since I didn't explain it earlier, legions are incredibly good. Not only do they cost half the amount of iron as a regular swordsman, they also have an additional five combat strength and they have the unique ability to build a Roman fort. The Roman fort isn't really that important unless in very specific scenarios, but what's actually more important that because they have the Roman fort, they have a builder charge, which means that you can use the builder charge to either repair tiles they have pillaged or remove features, which means they can chop out other improvements like builders can, which means they can even chop out other military units. Combine that with Magnus and a Goge, you can have an incredibly fast military very early in the game. That's phenomenal. I will quickly send them up this way to clear out this camp just so I don't have to deal with it at all anymore. And now we can also go ahead and upgrade our first warrior, level two warrior, to a legion. And I'll chop out more warriors as well, just so that we have them. This guy's having a tough time here. I think if I step forward, the spearman comes and attacks us. So I need to get to fortified territory. All right, we're here. We keep getting iron improved. But we have access to our government now. It's time for oligarchy. And we can run Discipline and Agoge at the same time, as well as Conscription to keep our gold return high. I would like to chop out the population in Rome. It's time to get Military Tradition as well to get support bonuses, and it's definitely a Warlord Throne game. All right, yeah, there's spawning That's horses crazy. here. This is why I was trying to deal with this problem immediately. But look how strong this Legion is. 40 base strength, 10 versus barbarians, five with the great general and four with oligarchy. One shotting that horse. That is so good, dude. Also, currency is unlocked. Commercial hubs are here and it's time to let those down. These are also discounted. 63 production instead of 107. So every city that can build a, a commercial hub should totally do that right now. And even though this is a really good food tile, I will crush it for the gold. The gold is the most important thing right now. That means this city can also get its commercial hub soon. Was it going for a commercial hub? I don't think it was. This city can either get a campus or a commercial hub. So campus here, or I think we just go commercial. And I think it's time to start backing up our legions with archers. Uh, this guy's in a problem area <laughs> is the best way to put it and as soon as i get the gold i can upgrade more legions all right he's gonna take some shots for us so i can heal and let's do this 65 combat strength versus a barbarian clear that camp 330 gold again meaning we get another legion and we'll bow <laughs> dude we're so oh my goodness this is gonna be phenomenal this general will also come back down here as soon as this legion is upgraded at another yeah as long as i have these four legions that's plenty uh we actually do need that battering ram now that i think about it this warrior is just gonna fortify and heal he'll be fine 
General needs to get down here. The Spearman's gonna keep on fighting. He should be able to get a promotion soon too. And then our city here is going to just work on infrastructure. So we're going for, just get our monuments out, I guess. Uh, we could chop out a quick archer. And we do have charges here, so I will actually be able to use these charges. I I tend to like to chop out other legions with legions, but at this point, we might as well, we have plenty of legions, so I might as well chop out archers in a battering ram. May the forces of All right, there's archery, so let's go ahead, chop out an archer, come out here. We can also chop out, I can't chop stone yet. I need to finish that masonry. I could probably just go right now. We have two generals too. Let's upgrade our promoted warrior. This guy might die. Um, I could attack and and hurt that unit. I'd rather get back up here though, to this hill. Let's also make peace with Coupe. There's no need to be poor. He'll give us a little bit of gold too. And yeah, we have four legions. It's time, it's time. This army is massive by the way. Uh, we'll actually get a good deal here with Coupe. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. Promotion, echelon, and we'll be able to clear that guy out. Horseback riding. Uh, we can go ahead and use these chops here. The chopper out the archers. I actually do need the battering ram though, so that is the most important. So this is just a little weird how I'm doing this, but I think you can see what the goal is, is to just chop out a massive army as fast as possible and go attack. We're going a little bit late compared to what we were, <laughs> what we had set up, but that is okay. Build that barb. There's a builder here. Dang it. All right. So let's do another chop. We have seven population in the city now. We can get, actually get a campus in the capital. They are discounted, but commercial hubs are just too important right now. And that's enough. We're going. We have the legions, we have the battering rams, we have the general. Um, I could use one more archer though. One more archer would boost machinery for us and we can get a free shot here. Now we have five legions, three archers, a warrior and a battering ram, yeah. <laughs> this is about to be ridiculous. Step with legions, battering ram. Let's go ahead and denounce her. To get, it'll take five turns to get the battering ram up. Clear out the barbarians, get a little bit of gold, uh, healing here. It's time for... I'm gonna take out a Goge and run uh, the influence points. Holding on to city-states that I meet as we go will be really important. Georgia does, does have galleys. Uh, that's something I didn't know. So I'm gonna tech galleys really quickly here. And then army, this army is so big. At turn 66, five cities? Holy cow. She's building campuses for us. Oh, Georgia, you shouldn't have. <laughs> you really shouldn't have. <laughs> step, 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 batting a ram. Uh, this warrior is actually gonna come with us. He'll get upgraded when we take the first city. And I will go for commercial hubs in all of these cities. There we go. Here's our formations. This is an unstoppable force here. And with War on the Horizon, that's where we're going to end today's video. But make sure you subscribe because part two will be coming. And you can see just how effective this Legion push is. If you learned anything new, make sure you hit that thumbs up and maybe comment down to the Goddess of Algorithms Pantheon. And stop by my Twitch channel. I might be streaming there today. Later, nerds. Oh.